I know they've got three more coming up against the Giants, and I understand that you've got 14 games coming up against the Washington Nationals, the Miami Marlins, so you're going to have a softer landing here. But honestly, two, two wins against these good teams. I mean, this is the part of the year when any Mets fan starts to get this very familiar feeling, and it starts as like a pit in your stomach. And then it starts to grow and grow and grow. And it's that familiar feeling like, right, this team isn't making the playoffs again. This team isn't making the playoffs again. It's going to be the fifth straight year. And you had the GM calling out the team before you and I left on vacation. You've got the owner calling out the team while you and I are on vacation in a tweet. And I don't know about you, but I'm starting to look around this roster. And obviously, this just isn't working. You know, offensively, they've been bad all season. And I'm starting to wonder, like, Who do you even keep at this point? This is where I'm at as the frustrated Met fan. Who do you even keep at this point? You have no argument to pay Michael Conforto at this point. I don't know if you ever really had an argument. You were kind of hoping that last year was going to be this launch point. I mean, is Jeff McNeil even really part of the plan when they trade a guy for a rental to take out him playing his best defensive position when they traded for Javi Baez? I mean, Luis Rojas said J.D. Davis is going to stay at third for now. Dom is slugging 363. I mean, the team needs a complete makeover. Offensively, we've seen enough. And this pit in my stomach, despite the fact that I look 10 years younger, the pit in my stomach is starting to grow. And I know this feeling and I hate this feeling because it's become way too familiar. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I I think for the Mets, uh, I, it's kind of... Uh, it, New owner, same story. I mean, oh. I think that's that's the problem you've had here. I mean, we can run through the roster about keeper, you know, who should stay, who should go, you know, and, and we're going to have that conversation at one point in time. But I, I think, unfortunately for the Mets, the way that it is all unfolded, the way that, you know, the the owner tweet, whether it be, you know, Qualabom getting called out, whether it be, you know, the injuries, whether it be DeGrom being placed on 60-day IL, the latest with, uh, you know, Mike Puma saying that, you know, regardless of whether or not this team is in any sort of playoff race, they want to see Jacob DeGrom back on the mound at some point this year. Uh, the bats, you know, chemistry, I mean, all of these things. And, you know, it's it's the same story with the Mets, even though the leadership has changed, even though it's a new owner and Steve Cohen and they brought back Sandy Alderson and, yeah, the interesting offseason with a lot of negative headlines, but you know, you thought it was going to be different this year, and for a large stretch of the season, it was. They were sitting in first place. I know the division was particularly bad, and you could say they were playing mediocre baseball, but they were still sitting in first place and said, "All right, well, at least we have that to rest our head on." And they've died on the vine. I mean, they really have. I mean, and it's it's tough to watch, even with the victory yesterday in Los Angeles over the Dodgers and the return of Baez to the lineup and the doubles that he gave you and. You know, they have the nice 7-2 victory and Stroman giving you a nice performance. It it almost seems like it's kind of too little too late, even with the soft landing spot, as you mentioned, the 15 games against the Nats and the Marlins, you know, after this stretch is that, you know, they, they died right before you. They're not going to get to September and play relevant baseball. It has a hard time envisioning, you know, the – you know, the Atlanta Braves right now are streaking. They're the, one of the hottest teams in Major League Baseball. They went out there and reinvested in their team, even without Ronald Acuna Jr. at the MLB trade deadline, Maggie. And and they're playing some of their best baseball right now. And the Mets are playing some of their worst to where now you call into question the leadership, the manager, the coaching, the hitting coach, the GM, Sandy Alderson, the future, Steve Cohen going out there and griping on social media with his tweets. And you get to the same storyline of the Mets seem to can't seem to get out of their own way because – you know, it's different last year when during that 60 game season where we had, uh, you know, conversations about, well, this lineup is too talented to be this bad, right? We had Mark Carrigan from The Athletic who said he was talking to a scout and said, well, there's too many. I just don't understand it. The Mets have one of the more potent offenses, potent lineups in all of Major League Baseball. How can they be this bad situationally? Right. Well, now it's now it's gone the complete opposite. Now you're calling a question just how good this group is. I have no idea. I know that this is now feels like the real team, right? Because how could I think any differently? How could I think any differently? Like, even if guys start playing a little bit better or here and there, like the GM said it all when he said, we've been playing mediocre baseball all season long. And I think I was trying to see something just like Brandon Nimmo. I saw this quote from a couple days ago where he said, it's really tough because a few weeks ago we were in first place and feeling really good about things. 
you were feeling really good about things. Uh, maybe Brandon Nimmo should be feeling really good about things. He personally has yeah. been having a great season ever since he came back from injury. But when your record, yes, you were in first place, your record was never good enough that you would have been in first place in any other division in baseball. How could you guys possibly have felt good about that? I never felt good about it. I was up here every day saying, I'm on the ledge. I'm ready to jump. I'm ready to jump. And it turns out it really was all for nothing to even think that they were going to come back or that they were going to somehow break out of this. Where is the proof that they will ever break out of this? Like, I feel like this team needs a makeover. And the thing about Cohen, we missed it when we were off on vacation and he sends out that tweet and listen, he's the owner. He can say whatever he wants. I don't know how effective that tweet is going to be in putting everyone on notice like that, but this is what I hope doesn't happen with Steve Cohen. Please don't be all bark, no bite. Please don't be Twitter warrior, right? Like, this is the way that he's communicating with the fans now. That's fine. He wants to communicate. All right, we're going to take the ups and downs with Steve Cohen's tweeting. But please don't be all bark, no bite. Don't send out that tweet. But if you are not prepared to make significant changes in the offseason, then that tweet doesn't mean jack. And that's what I worry about with the owner. You you want to be famous. You want to be out there. You want to be a Mark Cuban. You want to be a Steinbrenner, whatever you want to be. But you got to react. And I'm not saying you, you know, want to make all these, you know, like hair trigger, you know, finger things and, and not think them out. But you can't send that stuff out and that put that kind of tweet out there if you are not ready to make significant changes if this team doesn't make the playoffs. And how could you think they're going to make the playoffs now? Well, they're sitting. So I think we're all going to find that out together. I, I I guess I would I would look at it, you put a three to five year window. I I can't tell you for sure if it's going to be you know all bark no bite or he's going to give you a significant where heads are going to roll after the season. I probably have a tendency to believe that there will uh, be changes, uh, significant ones, whether it be guys in a leadership role or whether it be player personnel after this season uh, does come to an end with Steve Cohen. I would have to believe it would. It's got to make him crazy that against the Dodgers, you were only able to come up with this, you know, the the two series against him in the last 10, you were able to come up with one win. Yeah. Because we know what he thinks about the Dodgers. He tried to buy the Dodgers in 2012, fell short to Guggenheim Partners, Magic Johnson, and the like. We know from his introductory press conference, or whenever he said it, that he believes that the Dodgers are the crown jewel organization, right, of Major League Baseball. Not the Yankees, the Dodgers. This is where he's looking at the Dodgers and saying they are the ones who are the crown jewel organization. You just got spanked by the Dodgers. So that's got to make the owner feel even worse about the product that he's watching and paying for right now because that just adds some salt into the wound. This is how far away you are from the Dodgers. Well, but didn't you know that already? Well, yes, but I think that yeah, <laughs> I, mean, didn't you know uh, that I did. I mean, well, then Moose, I, I mean, but here's the thing: like, the, the, do yes, you, need, you do. Do you but, need the Dodgers taking six or seven against the Mets to to kind of hammer home that it's the Dodgers world in the National League, and then the Mets aren't close to LA? Well, I also thought that the Mets really understood that they needed to add more at the deadline, and I thought everyone kind of knew that, and apparently everyone didn't know that, right? And so. There's like this half in, half out with the Mets right now, thinking that somehow they had enough to win the division when nobody ever felt comfortable except for them. And well, I don't see how that was possible. No, no, I, I get it. And and I don't know if I don't know if the Mets felt completely comfortable. I just don't think they were willing to pay the price. They weren't willing to pay the price for Barrios from the Minnesota Twins, right? Uh, you know, the Max Scherzer wasn't part of the equation, right? They weren't going to go get Trey Turner. We had the conversations about Javier Baez and and Chris Bryant with the Chicago Cubs. They end up bringing in Javier Baez, and you know Bryant's doing his thing with the San Francisco Giants, as as we have seen, and he can play multiple positions. But you know, I I think the Mets, you know, it's a matter of the Dodgers don't care about prospects. Though, though, I mean, you've seen it. You see that you saw with the Mookie Betts trade, or you money. saw with the Trey Turner trade, you saw with the Max Scherzer and Trey Turner trade, I should say. You know, the Dodgers aren't concerned about trading guys down on the farm system and what those guys are going to be because they realize their championship window is is in the here and now. So, you know, that's what was frustrating about the Mets. And and maybe it was a case, Maggie, where the Mets, you know, deep down they realized, you know, they found out about the, you know, kind of the second injury with Jacob DeGrom a couple hours before the MLB trade deadline. You know, they had, uh, you know, they may, maybe at that stage they said, well, what are we exactly going to win? We're not willing, we're not where the Dodgers are. We're not a championship or 
a title contending team if we do not have a healthy Jacob DeGrom. And why even bring him by it? Well, no, I, I get it because they wanted to do something. Because, I mean, I, we said at the time, I mean, there were a lot of people who believed they brought in Javier Baez to light a fire under Francisco Lindor. I mean, which makes little to no sense. No. I, I just gave Francisco Lindor $341 million. Well, he earned it, right? He gave him that contract past this season. I should not need another player to motivate Francisco Lindor, nor should Lindor be a guy that – is leading my pro personnel department about what player we should go acquire because there was reports before the MLB trade deadline that there were many, there were a couple of veteran Mets that were pushing more for Baez than they were for Chris Bryant. So that's the frustrating angle when you look at this team because now you're saying, all right, well, what kind of reaction are we going to get from Cohen? Cohen's going out there and stopping his feet on social media, which he's every right to do as an owner, right? And he's more, you know, more engaging with fans than any other owner here in the tri-state area, no doubt. which is fine. And sometimes he comes across well, sometimes he comes across poorly, as we all do. On Twitter, as we all do on social media, sometimes it lands and sometimes it doesn't, right? So with Steve Cohen, he doesn't land all the time. Okay, so be it. Now the question is going to be, well, what is the reaction here? You know, if you want to be the Dodgers, then go be the Dodgers. And what I mean by that is it can't be a case of, well, we're not going to spend money like a drunken sailor. It can't be a case, well, we're going to sign James McCann because of timing and not wait out JT Real Muto. It's not going to be a case of, well, you know what, we're uncomfortable going the extra year on George Springer, right. so therefore now he's a Toronto Blue Jay. You know what, the, the Dodgers don't care. I mean, they, they really don't. I mean, they're, they're going to go out there. They're investing in the here and now. So if you're going to be them, and you want to, you know, have a healthy farm system to go along with a star upon star upon star on the major league level, well, then you have to go get those stars, whether it be via trade or via free agency. I, I just don't feel like if you want to be the Dodgers, then Sandy Alderson is not going to make you the Dodgers. I just, I've lost faith. I've lost all faith. 877-337-6666. I think, I think it's a fair, I'm sorry, Maggie, to yeah. cut you off. I think it's a fair criticism of Alderson, who, you know, everybody at the time when they brought him aboard, and now, mind you, Sandy was brought here to be a guy that kind of appeased the other owners, you know, you know, across Major League Baseball, that Cohen, the richest singular owner in all of Major League Baseball, he wasn't going to spend like a drunken sailor. He was also, if you go back, the Mets couldn't hire a head of baseball operations. No, they had trouble. They had trouble. They couldn't find anybody, right? They couldn't they couldn't get other 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 executives from other organizations, whether it be family, whether it be their situation. They were uncomfortable coming here to New York. So therefore, Sandy took over the business. And the head of baseball operations. Then they hired Jared Porter. And the goal then was going to be the general manager. Sandy was going to go out there and teach Jared Porter. And then eventually he would become the head of baseball operations. Then that imploded. Then you have Scott taken over as an acting interim GM. So everything has not gone according to plan here for the Mets. Now the question is, you have every right to have a reservation about Sandy Alderson. Hall of Fame baseball executive, no doubt about it. But he's been a guy that you know, likes to do things his way from a baseball perspective? Do they go out and be super aggressive after this season comes to an end? Because you have a hard time envisioning this group rallying the troops yes. seven games out as we sit here on this Monday, two games under the 500 mark after getting taken behind the woodshed by the Giants and Dodgers. I just... I think that a lot of these guys are Sandy's guys, and I know that you have to have a certain amount of detachment if you're going to do that job, but I wonder if there is going to be too much emphasis being placed on guys who Sandy drafted or brought in or looks at as success stories when you just don't have the evidence that these guys are going to be good enough to get it done. That's what I worry about. I mean, saying that you weren't signing George Springer because of Michael Conforto, how dumb does that look now? Because you had to leave some room for Michael Conforto? I mean, I want Conforto to be something that he just might not be, Moose. And, like, coming to grips with that as a fan is hard enough, but doing it with Conforto and Dom – and McNeil, like, it is just hard to come to grips with the fact that this is just not going to be the team. It's not going to be the team. And the sooner that the Mets figure that out and the sooner they get somebody else in here to remake and make over this team, the better they'll be. 877-337-6666. Because we're all just wasting time now. We're Now we're just wasting time. We're wasting DeGrom's time, wasting my time. Well, who knows when you see Jacob DeGrom back on the map. Well, and we, I, I don't even know if Mets this is smart to bring him back. It doesn't. Him in September. 
I like in some ways I'm kind of like, all right, sense. good. Put them out there. And I guess if you feel something else, then maybe you would know and can send them to a doctor. I guess I understand that. That's the ultimate. But and, I don't know. You move them to the 60 day IL. You get the story over the weekend by Puma that they want them to come back regardless of whether or not they're in a playoff race or not. Right. And right now you have a hard time. In vision. That makes little to no sense. I mean, it really does. I mean, you're going to have Jacob DeGrom. Unless they're looking for something else. But you can't find have, it in a you're, bullpen you're gonna, session. You're going to have DeGrom pitching in a late September game. This team eight nine games out yeah just, i mean what are you doing that, that is like so metzian it really is I that told is you. so metzian i told you lol mets was coming that made back. no sense that makes no sense to me hey we will get into the yankees we're giving away yankee tickets every single hour so you want to make sure to tune into that 